Greetings and welcome to this video in my Inventor Tips and Tricks playlist. This one's going to show you how to create a compound angle hole on a flat face. It's off the back of the another video I've just done, uh, with it, which is how to create a hole on a spherical surface. And it's using a relatively similar technique. And I just thought, well, you know, whilst I'm on the topic of holes, I might as well cover this one, because this is another this is another one that gets asked quite a lot by kind of new starters to Inventor. How do I do this? Because it's one of those ones that's just not easy to do. It's just not straightforward and self-explanatory. So what I've got here is just a basic IPT. It's just a plate, an extrusion. That's it. Nothing special about it. But I need to create a compound angle hole, which is, if, if you don't know, it's a, a, a hole, a drilled hole, but it doesn't go perpendicular down from the face. It's not a straight normal drill down it kind of drills at an angle so how do we do that it's not as easy as you might think first things we need to do is create a sketch so I'm going to start by creating a 2d sketch and it's going to go through the YZ plane the YZ plane intersects symmetrically through the middle of my part file however if you need to drill a hole here you can create a work plane running through there and just do the same thing so we're going to start with the sketch on the YZ plane and then press F7 to slice the graphics because it's just a lot clearer. Right, what do we do next? Well, we need to start putting some sketch geometry down to tell Inventor where the hole is going to be and what the angle of the compound hole is going to be. So we're going to start by projecting the geometry of this edge here and then this edge here. I'm then going to place a point. The point is going to be the it's going to be the entry point for the hole and let's just say around about here and I'm going to create a dimension to tell Inventor exactly what the dimension of that hole is going to be from the edge of the plate so let's just say 30 that's where the hole is going to start it's going to drill from next thing we need to do is to tell Inventor the angle of the hole to do that we need to create both a construction line, well we need to create two construction lines one's going to be the angle of the hole but then the other one's going to be the reference point for the angle so we're going to create a line I'm going to make it a construction line and I'm going to draw a line just vertically upwards. That's going to be the reference angle. The second line is going to be the drill angle. So we're going to start on the point and then we're going to say this is the hole is going to be drilled here and it's going to be on this angle here. Then create a dimension between this line here and then this line here. And then you specify the angle for the hole. So let's just say your angle is going to be 15 degrees from this reference line here. That's it. Finish the sketch. Right, we need to give Inventor a couple of more things to work with because as, again, if you have watched the other video for the spherical hole, the placement method that we're going to create for the 3D hole doesn't recognize sketch geometry. So we need to create some work geometry, some work features. So I'm going to start by creating a work axis and I'm going to place the work axis on this line here. So that sketch line was created purely for the intention of placing the work axis and then once we've got the axis created, we're going to place a work point at the intersection between the work axis and this flat face. And that creates us, which you cannot really see, so I'm just going to hide sketch 2. That creates a work point where the work axes and this face intersect. There you go. Okay, what next? Right, well, we've got to then go to the whole command. The placement type is going to be on point. The point is our work point. The direction is the work axis. So pick your work axis. And unfortunately, inventors sometimes can get a bit confused and it's defaulted to drilling the hole upwards, which is just ridiculous. Why it does that, I have no idea. So just use this button here to flip it around and it's now gonna drill down over, following the direction of our work axis. So that was the whole point earlier on of specifying the angles and the construction lines. The hole is now following the angle we specified in the sketch. So termination through all, diameter of five in my case, but you can pick any options you want. You can make it a tapped hole, you know, isometric profile, whatever you need to do, full thread depth, yada, 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 whatever it is you need to do. Click OK, and then we've got our hole. The most observant of you there will notice there's a bloody great big glaring error going on here. Yes, indeed, because the hole is at an angle. It started drilling the hole kind of perpendicular to the work axis if you know what I mean it's sort of normal to the work axis so we're kind of left with this random bit of solid here which you cannot keep it that way you, there's, you can't do that so what some people might do is do another hole but then go upwards but then if you do a whole table you end with two holes it's sad that you just don't do that the tip here and this is really quite neat is we use this delete face option now you can't delete the face because 
that will delete the entire top face. So what you do, select delete face, orbit around till you can see sort of inside the hole and then you can select this face here. Select it, this bit of leftover crap at the top and then select heal, click OK. That will then delete that bit of crap at the top and then heal the top surface and it leaves you with a perfect compound angle drilled hole. Look at that. The work features are now done with, so I can select the work point and the work axis and hide them. And there we go. You're left with your compound angle hole drilled at 15 degrees. Okay, right. Hopefully you followed that. Um, if you did, I hope it helps. Please press like on the video if you liked it, if it was useful to you. Uh, please put some comments down below if you've got any feedback or input to this video. And subscribe to the channel. It helps a lot. And thank you very much, guys, and until next time, see ya.